I'd just like to impart some information about uh, wood pellets. Now these sort of pellets we use in our boiler. As you can see, they're quite soft really, which is what you want. It's in a pellet boiler, you want the, the pellet to burn quite freely. And uh, if they're too dense, then they stay solid and the, the burnt material doesn't come off the outside. I've got some uh, poor quality pellets here. And for a start, they're really dense. And in various bits of them, there's odd bits of plastic and all sorts of things. You can see that the outside is really quite dark compared to the middle. And that means it's been heated up to form the pellet. There's been a lot of friction. So these ones, when they burn, they don't use as much oxygen because we've got an oxygen sensor on the boiler and it tells you what the oxygen content of the exhaust is. So these don't burn as efficiently and because they're very dense, the middles just sit there and glow so you don't get as much heat from them. And because there's a lot of uh, impurities in them, you get quite a lot of clinker. Now clinker can be stuff like this, sort of a hard material. It's quite hard. Yeah. And this is the impurities melting. This is some other clinker, but it's not quite so bad. It's a bit sort of falls apart easier. So the, the impurities melt at a quite a low temperature compared to the burning of wood and cause this clinker. So this is a particular bad piece where you can see that it's sort of a bit shiny. It's really melted quite a lot. There you go, you see that bit's quite shiny. So poor quality and cheap pellets are counterproductive whereas nice clean pellets where the outside is the same colour as the inside means that they've been produced under ideal conditions. The way pellets are produced is quite interesting in so much as you take wood chip from a wood chipper but you don't want the small material that's normally produced by arboricultural type chippers. You want quite big pieces. That's then dried but it's not dried too much. It wants to be between sort of 14 and 20 percent something like that. If it's wetter than that once it's been through the process and into the pellet mill it could quite easily create pellets that fall apart because it's too wet. If it's too dry what happens is the creates far too much friction in the pellet dye and therefore you get very hard pellets that won't burn properly. So let's assume that we've got the the wood chip at about the right moisture content, let's say 18%. Then you put it through a hammer mill. Now a hammer mill will then produce stuff like that. It's about two or three mil long. It breaks the wood chip up into smaller pieces. Then you've got to remove the dust from this material. If you leave the dust in there, it compacts too much. And again, creates a lot of heat in the dye and a lot of friction. So having removed the, uh, the dust, then this goes into a pellet mill. Now, the basic method of uh, making pellets is imagine this is a solid steel ring and it's got loads of holes, rows and rows of holes all the way around the outside and then inside here there are two heavy duty rollers so the this material goes in there 
and the rollers roll round, a bit like an old fashioned paint mill or something like that, or um, um, an apple crushing mill. And the action of the rollers pushes the material through all these holes. This is what's called a die. And it pushes all the way through the holes and the pellets stick out like this to the point where they break off. They break off and fall down and then go up an elevator to a cooler because as you imagine this all gets very hot with the friction. And the heat is good in some instances because wood is made out of cellulose and lignin. And lignin is a dark brown material, it's like a glue that holds all the cellulose together. When you're steam bending material, you put a piece of timber in a steamer and you heat it up and you soften the lignin. Then you bend the wood and leave it cool and it stays in the shape you've left it in. So that's the properties of lignin. So these pellets are held together purely by the melted lignin rehardening. So you've got this die and it's heated the lignin up by friction and then the pellets come out and they're quite warm so therefore you've got to be a bit careful with them or they'll fall apart. So then the pellets go through a cooler and then they go through a cleaner again to remove the excess dust and then they get bagged. So if you have poor material to start with, with impurities and bark, bark is a very bad one because that again melts at a lower temperature, causes all this uh, clinker which blocks the burning head up of your uh, pellet burner. But the other thing of course is impurities mean that you've got greater friction and the pellets are too dense and so therefore they don't burn freely. Pellets, when they're like this, are absolutely delightful because the stove, you light it in the autumn and it runs, as long as you keep putting pellets in once or twice a week into the hopper, then it just keeps running and it ticks over all night using virtually no pellets first thing in the morning when the time clock comes on the heating fires up isn't it gorgeous I hope this has been some help just to understand the basic premise of wood pellets